I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us and, and uh, hearing a, another very unusual and interesting story. Patrick Layerly, Layerly, yes, thank you, has joined us, and so we're excited to hear his story. And Patrick, you're actually a convert to the church. I am. Right? So what were your, your family growing up? What was... Uh, I was Were never they, raised Christian. Never raised Christian, no. no. Family didn't go to church or anything? Nope, never got to church or anything. Wow. But, uh, yeah. No prayers kind of thing? I mean, you pray over the food when you're... Nope. In the, wow. <laughs> Interesting. <clears throat> but so, I did, go ahead. Sorry, but I did, uh, I did come to know, I think I came to know who God was. I used to watch about him on TV, you know, TV preachers and stuff. Did you, as a young person? Yeah, as a young person. Yeah. That God always intrigued me. I've always right. had a Bible. God always intrigued me. So. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> well, and so your dad is approached by missionaries. Is that right? Or tell us the story. Yes. So, uh, on that note, uh, I was walking home from school, and lo and behold, this is when I was 13, yeah. lo and behold, two guys in white shirts and ties were sitting at the kitchen table who the heck are these guys oh really i thought they were like some of my dad's friends or yeah uh but uh we started talking and then so many lessons later i joined the church really what what do you remember <clears throat> about the the initial story oh, of the of what the missionaries shared uh -huh. i loved every minute everything that they taught me the book of mormon Jesus Christ. Did they tell you about this young boy, Joseph Smith? They did talk about Joseph Smith. My main interest was Jesus Christ. Really? So, because uh, I... Do you feel like they were teaching that? Yes, I, I feel like uh, they taught about Jesus Christ. But they, I think their main message was uh, Joseph Smith and knowing of the Book of Mormon is true. Well, I, I don't know if they have changed that differently. I know I didn't feel like I spent much time talking about Jesus on my mission. Because as a 13-year-old boy, I just remember... Uh, just remember those things. Just remember those little things they pull out, like, Feast Upon the Words of Christ, or... Yeah. Uh, well, did your dad join then? No. Oh, he didn't? No. Any other, anybody else in the family? No. Well, so were you kind of a golden contact? Did you, <laughs> you say, after a few lessons, or probably six of them or so, you got baptized? Yeah. I, I guess you can call me a golden contact. Yeah. Was your was your dad was your dad okay with that? <clears throat> he was totally fine. Really? He, he thought that oh, church would just get some good morals in him, good values. Yeah. So uh, he just didn't think of it as any other church except a Christian church. And did you start going to the church? I guess Mormon church. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'd walk to church sometimes. I couldn't find rides because my dad wouldn't take me. And uh, he. And where was this at? We didn't even ask where you were born. <clears throat> so I was born in Bremerton, Washington. Okay. A little Navy so town. So was this all in Bremerton then? Yes, a little Navy town. My dad was in the Navy, so that's how we got there. He was kicked out of the Navy. Oh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, so then uh, I wasn't baptized in Bremerton. I was baptized in a little town called Gig Harbor. So, uh, in what? In Gig Harbor, oh, okay. Gig Harbor, Washington. Yeah. So I was uh, uh, lived with my dad until I was 16, and then I moved back in with my mom. But Bremerton was where I was okay. born. Uh, let me ask, were you made a deacon initially? After your baptism? <clears throat> when I was baptized, and right. I don't remember exactly how soon, 
But yes, I went into the a deacon. I did the sacrament, did all that. Okay, deacon and teacher, teacher and, and priest, yeah, and priest, and you blessed the sacrament, and all that stuff. Oh and, yeah. And were you learning a lot about the church? Did you study much? Did you read the Book of Mormon? Oh yeah, I read it. Uh, when I first joined the church back then, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, I didn't really know much about the history of the church. Oh no. I no, just okay. believe that Jesus Christ is my Savior. Of course, he is a savior in Mormonism. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I just, I thought it was all about Jesus Christ. I soaked it up. That's interesting. And, and did you ever sense a difference between what you heard every Sunday and and this message of Jesus? What do you mean? Well, I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. I'd say maybe a, I'm reading into it more just because of my own experience. Yeah. The church doesn't. I don't get the sense that they spend a lot of time talking about Jesus. I think over the years I came to that conclusion, okay. but not in the beginning, for, okay. not in the first few years. And I don't want to cut them short. I mean, <clears throat> if they do talk about Jesus, I think that's wonderful. Yeah. But I do know that a lot of the th messages that we get are about home teaching and temple and sure. emergency preparedness and prophets and yeah. tithing and yeah. Sabbath day holy and <laughs> not so much about you know, Jesus and his mission and all yeah. of that. I mean, some, but anyway, so you go priest and then did you ever take seminary? Yes. Did you? Was yes. that early morning? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, Very yes. early morning. <laughs> I would say early morning, yeah. And uh, did you enjoy that? Or <clears throat> that? Oh, I loved it. You just had a good strong testimony, oh, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. So you end up choosing to go on a mission. I did. And <laughs> uh, what was, how did that come about and what, how, what no, happened? No, okay. Uh, I'll make this story short. I wanted to go on a mission, and I went to Alberta, Canada, Edmonton Mission. Okay. The thing is, is nobody wanted me to go on a mission. My bishop told me, why don't you go to the singles ward? Don't you want to get married? No, I want to go on a mission. I wrote the prophet, Mon President Monson. I wrote him and to that, go on a mission. And yeah, and you eventually got approved. But I Of mean, course, because he sent me a letter back, and he, he sent my stake president a copy as well. Yeah. I don't know if he did or his secretary, but... Right. Uh, yeah. So you had to go through an interview process and yeah. all that. Why didn't they want you to go on a mission? I have no idea. Oh. That the Spirit was telling them I should just go to the singles one and get married. Oh, yeah. I have yeah. no idea what the way the missionary force is today. You'd think they would, right? Yeah. But So how was your mission? Oh, wonderful. I was true believing yeah. everything. Did a lot of door knocking there yeah. in Alberta? Or yeah. do, you, do uh, you have a lot of lessons? Uh, yeah. I would say, yeah, we did some door knocking. I would say more, uh, more. we would try to get into people's houses and, yeah. and make appointments and stuff. Okay. Especially in the wintertime, very cold. Yeah. So. Well, I'm just fascinated the fact that you have such a strong testimony. And, you, I mean, uh, you just believed it completely. Oh, yeah. As did I. But, I mean, you had, <clears throat> but you didn't have that uh, support from your family much then it sounds like you were doing it all on your own oh yeah wow so what happens you come home from your mission I guess and, I come home from my mission and yeah. then uh, <clears throat> just continue going to church or do you... oh yeah I, 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 I drank it up <laughs> <laughs> did I you go to a singles ward at this yeah, point yeah I did I did loved you? the singles ward yeah uh, uh, but uh, I guess uh, when I came home I'll, I'll tell the say this, uh, uh, that before my mission I had questions about the church here and there, like why didn't the blacks hold the priesthood? Or, uh, so uh, you were aware of that? A long time ago in seminary, I asked my seminary teacher, uh, what about the scripture in Isaiah where it says, there's no God before me, I'm the only God. You really asked that I question really asked in that. seminary? Yeah, 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 and they didn't have any answer. You, you were smarter than I was. <laughs> <laughs> no answer, so what, I just put those was? on the back shelf of my yeah. mind. The, well, the answer was, is, well, that's no other God for them. For this it, It's just this world that we have to deal with. I mean, that's right. ridiculous. Yeah. God says, there's no other God formed after me, before me, no other God after me. Yeah. I even know not, he says he knows not any. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you put shelf that. Yeah. Yeah. I shelved that in the back of my mind. So when you went out on your mission. Oh, you were, I truly believe the church. Like, teaching oh, the first vision. And, the first vision, I truly yeah. believe that. Uh, see, <clears throat> and this is the problem that I told my bishop is, I believe the church is true because they talk about Jesus Christ, they teach about him. So anywhere where I read the Book of Mormon and it says, Jesus Christ is the Redeemer of the world, the Spirit will testify of truth. Yeah. That doesn't mean it came in cold plates. So I told my bishop, anytime 
Jesus, Joseph, Jesus Christ is talked about in the light of Joseph Smith, or Joseph Smith is in the light of Christ, then the Spirit will bear witness to me. Well, of course, Joseph Smith saw the resurrected Christ. Of course he's resurrected. doesn't mean he saw him. Yeah. So that's what I told my bishop. My problem is, is maybe I didn't have a witness of Joseph Smith individual outside of that witness of the Savior as well. Interesting. You see? Yeah. That's probably my problem. That's why I left. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you had this sense of Jesus and, and <clears throat> him being God. I've always loved Jesus Christ. He's always been my Lord, God, and King. Now, had you read the Bible much at this point? Oh, I love, love the Bible. Even as a Mormon, I mean. Even as a Mormon. I would hate it. Because I used to go on splits with the missionaries all the time, do fellowship for lessons a lot before my yeah. mission. I hated it when missionaries would always say, well, because I would always ask questions to the missionaries, to the full-time missionaries. And they in, didn't that, have answers. In the what? Well, the Bible's only true as far as it's translated correctly. Holy cow. The Dead well, Sea Scrolls disproved that. Yeah, that's interesting, <laughs> isn't it? Well, let me ask you, on your mission, for example, did you, run in, you ran into other Christians, <clears throat> yeah. good Christians, I oh, guess. Yeah. What did, did you sense? that they had a love for Jesus? Or oh, what, yeah. was the, what was the message there that you were trying to share then? Joseph Smith. The restoration. The restoration. Like, we have priesthood. You want your family sealed forever? Be baptized by priests of authority. Yeah. And did you realize that that was in conflict with the Bible? Uh, kind of. <laughs> kind of. Because, you know, you would read Hebrews as a Mormon. And yeah. It was just, and the priesthood needs to change. Oh, okay. Because when it says in Hebrews that the priesthood uh, it, uh, it needed to change, uh, uh I would always take that as, oh, well, now we don't sacrifice. Now we do other things like what we do in the LDS temples. Yeah, we do that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so, of course, there would be high priests running around still. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. So you, so what happens? You kind of, you're active. I mean, I know you're a ward missionary. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're also uh, worked with the priest, quorum. Yeah, yeah, Assistant advisor. to the bishop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Advisor. And so, uh, so what happens, actually? Well, the reason... What happened is, is uh, two years ago, it's as long as I lived in Utah, I'm from Washington State, right. and uh, uh, a couple of friends who were engaged at the time begged me to move to Utah. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not moving to Utah, because I know the culture is strong here, and I'm like, I just like, uh, I like being around a lot of non-members so I can share the gospel. And you like the mission field, I, I like guess. the mission field, yeah. I like sharing the gospel. And I'm like, that's not going to be much opportunity in Provo, Utah, to share the gospel. Now, when you're saying share the gospel, I mean the, the message saying, of the church. You're saying to teach the church as gospel. Church, Joseph right? Smith. The, Joseph Smith, the Book of Mormon, and all that. So, okay. Yeah, because I would always carry Book of Mormon with me everywhere I go. Did you? I love and it. hand it Excuse out. Or? Oh yeah, I had any opportunity I could. So. And you bore your testimony about the Book of Mormon. And, oh yeah, I, I just ate it up like it's another testament. <laughs> But uh, uh, what happened is, is these two guys, uh, I won't say the names, I don't know yeah. if they want me to or not, no, but probably best well, not two guys, a guy and a girl, they were engaged at the time, and they talked to me. They served a mission in Washington, that's how I got to know them originally, oh, okay. and I went on splits with them a lot when they served in the ward I was in, uh, which is surprising, because they served in the same mission and got together, but uh, Interesting. and are married now, uh, but... Um, and they left the church themselves. Oh, have they? Yeah. they. Uh, but they brought you, encouraged you to come to Utah. They encouraged me to come here. So I said, okay, I'll pray about it. And so I went to the Seattle Temple, and I prayed about it in the celestial room. And I didn't feel bad about it, but I didn't feel really good. I just felt, I mean, it was a peaceful feeling. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'm young, I'm single, why not? Yeah. Move halfway across the country and, <laughs> and live life. Yeah. You know, and so I did. And he uh, is actually who got me to start questioning the church more because... Uh, he hadn't left by then. No, he left already. Oh, he had already He got left. me to start questioning more because... What did he bring up to you? Book of Abraham issues, uh, these con all these contradictory stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay. And one day... Have you ever heard about that, the problem with the Book oh, of Abraham? Oh, I've, I've heard of all these problems before. They just never... You know, they just go in your Mormon mind and out the other. You, kind of you're like, oh, I know this is an issue, but... Whatever. It can't be that serious. It, uh, it's not serious. Whatever. It, yeah. I mean, it's true. Okay. <laughs> and, which uh, uh, I told my stake president recently, uh, my old stake president, uh, you know, I've prayed about the book of Abraham. God told me it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to that? He's like, well, you're looking at it in a more humanistic mind. You need to, start, you need to listen to the Spirit and pray more. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I don't have enough faith. 
So he was bringing up some issues that... Yeah, this, my friend, uh, friend. Tyler, well, now I said his name, but whatever. Uh, he, uh, he, he brought up these issues a lot. And it got me to think. And one time we were driving in a car. He was driving me home one time. And I said, look, Tyler, you can't shake my testimony. I know that this is true. And, <laughs> uh, so can don't even believe, try. Can you believe you were even saying that now? Yeah, don't even try. <laughs> but uh, there was this guy that I listened to. A few times I saw him on YouTube. I didn't constantly listen to him named Sean before my mission. And so when I came home from my mission, I'm like, who's this guy that I used to listen to on YouTube about Mormonism? And so I kept researching and finally I found him somehow. I don't I didn't remember his name, but somehow I found him. And Sean McCraney on YouTube, yeah. he actually helped me. Uh, his little clips of... His little YouTube clips, yeah, of Heart of the Matter and yeah. uh, his whole thing that he did in I think 2010 went through... ABCs of Mormonism. Uh, right. Uh, man, that really got me. <laughs> what kind of things bothered you? Blacks in the priesthood. Uh, again, the Book of Abraham. The I guess. Book of Abraham is the Book of Abraham was the main thing that because I can I can deal with Joseph Smith's polygamy. I can try to put that on the back shelf of uh, uh, maybe Book of Mormon translation, but we have the facts still in me one. Abraham fasted upon the altar. That frustrates me because. They say, well, we don't really know how Joseph Smith translated. It was a more spiritual thing. We just journal writings. This is how he translated, yeah, he said. The facsimile, that really got it's, me, It's too. a funerary text of the Egyptian gods. Yeah. yeah. That's why it says the gods created. And so, you see, and it's it, it always frustrates me because I read Hugh Nibley's book about it, one of his books. It, that was so frustrating. I wanted to, it, it was a library book, so I couldn't ruin it. <laughs> so I wanted to throw it across the room. You gave it back, though, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to burn it so nobody else had to deal with this shenanigans. Did he admit that it was a funeral text? Yeah. Oh, okay. But he tried to do some spin on it, too. Yeah. To say, oh, well. We didn't have all the text. We didn't have all the, the text. But what we do have condemned the church. See. Well, that's the way I felt about the facsimiles. Yeah. Because you can argue that we didn't have all the papyrus or it was folded <laughs> a certain way or something. But the facsimile just sits there. And it's in the Pearl of Great Price. Well, and it just doesn't have anything to do with I told with my bishop, what? a house divided against itself cannot stand. Why is the general authorities given these, if they claim to be seers, which is greater than a prophet, according to the Book of Mormon, prophet soon revelator, then why don't they translate it instead of giving it to Egyptologists to look at? They're condemning themselves. Yeah, that's a great question. Them. Why didn't the prophet soon revelator? A house revelator? divided against itself cannot stand, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> So what happens then? You start studying and you start oh, realizing there's and, things that... Oh, it was just, I was just, it was just so, it was too frustrating for me to try to justify the prophets. Why did Joseph steal other men's wives? Can you explain that? It's not biblical. No. Uh, why is he following Doctrine and Covenants 132? Yeah. If God gave it to him, he doesn't follow it exactly the way. Right. And so it was just so frustrating. And I started going to a church in, um, in Provo called Cross Point Church. Mm. Uh, and, uh, in fact, uh, uh, this, uh, we were talking about, bapt I was talking about bapt to baptism about someone, and uh, he's, <laughs> he says, well, uh, we had a baptism once, and there was lots of food there, and we celebrated, and I'm like, oh, food, <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> but uh, I was serious about baptism. I want the demonstration that I don't believe Joseph Smith is a prophet anymore. Um, and I can't tell you exactly what led me out except uh, well i can tell you it was the message of the cross jesus christ alone well that's how i guess i'm kind of getting at in a roundabout way when you go to the mormon church are you sensing that same reverence no. and awe of the cross no. and jesus i mean not, no, it's a different jesus isn't it not at all and that's why i got this tattoo is because uh <laughs> the uh, cross i wanted it to symbol that this is who i was I was Mormon, now I have a tattoo. I'm not Mormon, and this is why I'm going eternal life with the Father. Yeah. So, uh, because of what Jesus did on that cross. So I don't sense when I go to sacrament meeting or when I go to uh, uh, firesides or whatever, I don't sense the message there, like, look to the cross. It's what Jesus did. Look to Him, have faith in that. Not what we do, but what Jesus it's did. It's more, in the LDS, it's more... Someday I can return to Heavenly Father. If I do all I If I do all I and can. And endure to the end and uh, do all I can. Uh, if I, I go know. to, you know, I need to go to the temple and do this. If we do our family history, if we do this, yeah. if we do that. And uh, I called him to Sean's show 
And I said, this is like a half surreal of repentance. It's an impossible gospel. You make a mistake, you go to your bishop. My bishop told me once, you need to, you, you need to remember all those sins. You need to pray. Yeah. Get the spirit back, according to Dr. Cavern section, whatever he quoted to me. Repent all of your sins. You need to remember all the sins that you ever did in your life, and then have God this all repent of them. From the time I was born, I can't remember all those sins. You think I've we don't even know some of them, right? <laughs> some of the sins. Well, I had a revelation one time in my apartment. <laughs> I messed up, and I had to go see my bishop. And uh, before I left, the spirit told me there's no condemnation of them who are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Who walk not after the spirit, but after the living God. Mm -hmm. Oh, not after the flesh, but after the living God. And I'm like, no condemnation in Christ. And I quoted that to my bishop. The Holy Spirit brought that to me. And that was amazing. Do you think the Mormons understand grace? No, not at all. Because not this is what all. you're talking about, the grace being a gift of God. Not at all, I don't think. They say, we'll save by grace. Well, that's a free gift through resurrection only, not to live with the Father. That's what they think is just resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh... And uh, I had a guy tell me, uh, a young man in my singles work tell me, well, the Bible's a philosophical book. You can't even trust all of that, all that Paul said or whatever he told me. And I'm like, what? <laughs> He's an apostle. You trust your apostles. Why can't you trust him? Well, and I like it. I mean, <laughs> heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. I think the Bible, you know, as you probably believe now too, the Bible's the Bible, totally trustworthy. The Bible's trustworthy. I would say to an LDS person that, uh, of course, the Bible's not every record that Jesus ever did in his ministry or that. No, it said uh, it. Or, it does but that's because we're finding more records. But it's everything, but it has everything we need to know to return to the Father. Yeah. And that's what I say to LDS is that, it, that you can trust the Bible. Well, let's, let's mention this for a minute. You yeah. do go to temples and you talk to or at least out, stand outside temples oh, yeah. and talk to people. What do oh, you yeah. share with them? I share with them it's Jesus alone, not temple, not Masonic rites in a, in a temple and Masonic water. It's Jesus alone. Because my message, when I go to the temple to p talk to people, my message is, is that if, it's, if you trust that Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross is enough, then why do you go to a temple and have to, have to receive those key signs and tokens to go past the angels? To be able to go to the presence it of God. It does seem kind of strange, so doesn't it? So you, either you, you can't have both. Either you have one or the other. So they have to choose. Do they want the Masonic rites, the key signs and tokens? Or do they want Jesus' finished work? Because the temple saves you, but Jesus saves you. You can't have... Let me, let me ask you this. <laughs> Why does that seem like such a simple message to us now? And to the Mormons, it's so not simple. In fact, they don't even want to listen to that message. I don't know. Isn't that your response? Isn't that the response you get most of the time is, I don't want to listen? Or what, oh, yeah. what kind of other things do you hear? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I know the church is true. Or I don't want to they listen to They bear their to testimony. Or, yeah. Well, well, the security guards mainly come out. Every time I get the security guards from the temple coming out to me. Even if you're on the public street? Even if I'm on, on the public the side. I, in city center temple in Provo, they said, one of them said, as long as you're out here, we'll be out here with you. I said, okay. <laughs> and they'll listen to your message, I guess, yeah, over person, and over. <laughs> one person said, well, why are you here? Well, my message is to teach it's Jesus alone, not Jesus plus Masonic rites in the temple. Uh, and he says, well, you're talking to LDS people. I said, I know. And he, this was a few days ago. And he said, uh, um, well, this was last week, I think. And he said, um, well, why don't, why don't you get on a plane and go to a country where they don't even know about Jesus and talk about Jesus? You're talking to LDS people who... Who, who loved Jesus. And I said, well, you believe he's a created being. That's not the truth. He's the eternal God, according to the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and you talk, you talk that way to the I, I debate people? people because uh, if, like the security guards, they're going to come and debate me, I'll debate them. Now, if they're going to talk nicely and say, well, I want to hear what you have to say, then we'll have a dialogue. But if they want to debate, they want to argue. Uh, and get, has has and, anybody ever said, I want to hear what you have to say? No, but I had a, I had a young guy that uh, was talking to me, and I pulled out the scripture, no God's before me, no God's after me. And he was intrigued, like, oh, I never thought about that. The security guard came and pulled him away, and uh -oh. and that's when it was on. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but I'm very nice to people. I don't, uh, if, if they want to stop me and talk, we can. If not. What do you think of the phrase that we hear all the time, you can't leave the church alone? What do, uh, What do you think of that? I mean, even this show is kind of that, falls into that uh, comment, you know, you've left the church, why can't you leave it alone? I would say, 
I agree with that. You leave the church, you can't leave it alone. Why? Because when I left, I was kind of upset. Why does Elder Holland set up the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, supposedly, Prophet Sim Revelator, and he was interviewed. You can find this on Google. He was interviewed and says, I know the book of Abraham doesn't match up. I don't claim to know Egyptology, but we keep it because it ma what's written in it matches our doctrine. Why can't he, instead of saying he knows it doesn't match up, why doesn't he say, let me translate it for you, I'm a seer, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, then it's, then it's the book of Abraham, well, it's not. Instead, they send him to Egyptologists that condemn themselves, so you can't leave the church alone because Elder Holland says, we're going to keep the book of Abraham, we're mm -hmm. going to keep perpetuating the lie and say it's true, and they're lying to us, and I, that makes me upset, like, you yeah. claim to be an apostle, but you're lying to me. Interesting. So and that's why I can't leave the... it alone, because I want to tell people that it's that that this church yeah. lies to people. And when you think about it, the the church sends out seventy thousand or whatever thousand missionaries there are now. Yeah. So it's it's not that they're not out <sighs> trying to share their message. Yeah. And I think the fact that the and those of us that I, those that I've interviewed and both you and me. Um, have come to know that, that this Jesus of the Bible is a different Jesus than, than we found in Mormonism. It is, and I'll tell Mormons that I understand you're sincere. You want to seek Jesus. You want to have the living water. But you have temple rites, too, that save you. So which one do you want? Do you want yeah. that living water? Do you want... And well, uh, like So I say, know they're sincere. I can't argue testimony. If they say I love Jesus, I can't argue that. No. But... Uh, because I know where I came but from, they too. But they need to understand, like you were saying, the difference between grace and works. Yeah. They need to know that Jesus has already he's done. Enough. He's enough. He's he, enough, and he's yeah. done what, he's, what he did, and we don't need to do anything. Now, we do stuff after yeah. we love our God and our fellow man, yeah. and we serve and try to try to do well, right? Well, there's just a few seconds left, actually. <laughs> what would you say to your... You've kind of said it, but what would you say to your family, friends, and... I know you've lost a few friends over oh, this. For sure. But I would say, uh, just turn to Jesus Christ. Trust in Him. Read the Bible like Read a child. Bible. I would say, open up the Bible, especially the book of Hebrews. If you really want to... Isn't that great? If you really want to uh, debug Mormonism, read Hebrews. And then... Um, and find uh, out who our high priest really is. Huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, but read it with a child's eye. Don't yeah. just say, well... I'm going to read it, and then, uh, you know, when... Patrick, but, our time's all gone. I know, this is too short. It's too short. But Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah. You've got a wonderful spirit, and oh, man, I, I hope you plant a lot of seeds. And I don't know that people will actually do whatever, but you've planted seeds. Amen. Thanks.